In this video, we'll be focusing on gas exchange in plants, and this is the standard level or core material. On the underside of leaves, you'll notice very small openings called stomata. So stoma, singular, stomata, plural. And these are openings that allow air to come in or out. And one of the consequences of having that open is that that plant will experience water loss. More on that later. But we want to keep our eye on these stomata as areas of exchange for those gases. And here they are in this side view right here, okay? So these stoma, okay, or this stoma, or these stomata, these are openings and they're really helpful for gas exchange. Let's talk about some of the other structures in this leaf that help with this. So on the upper side of the leaf, you're going to notice this upper epidermis. Um, on the bottom, you'll notice the lower epidermis. And the upper epidermis may be covered with a waxy cuticle. So this epidermis is just like the epidermis of your skin. It's there to help protect the leaf. And that waxy cuticle is there to help prevent any excess water loss. You'll also notice that there's a row of very tightly packed cells here. This is called the palisade mesophyll, and this is where we're going to see a lot of photosynthesis, okay? So these cells are going to be tightly packed with chloroplasts. They're there to absorb sunlight, and that's why they're also at the upper surface of the leaf. In the middle here is this area called the spongy mesophyll, and it's spongy because there are holes. So you'll see all these air sacs here. That is also highly adapted for gas exchange. Okay, so when these palisade mesophyll cells are doing lots of photosynthesis, they need to be able to get carbon dioxide in. So maybe I should write that here. These guys need carbon dioxide to go into their cells and they need oxygen to come out. So in that gas exchange process, we need room for those gases to move. And so those gases are going to move through these spaces in the spongy mesophyll and then in and out of of these stomata. Now gas exchange is great, it's necessary to get that carbon dioxide in and that oxygen out, but one of the consequences of having those stomata open is that the plant is going to experience water loss. So water is going to move from areas that are very moist to areas where it is dry. That's why if we want to set our clothes out to dry, we do it in an area that's dry, not like a super moist like bathroom or something like that. So that water loss Loss is called transpiration, the movement of water or the loss of water vapor from the leaves. So when we think about how water moves through plants, it's not really helpful to think about it as being pushed from the bottom up. What's happening here is that water is actually evaporating through those stomata and that water vapor that is evaporating pulls the water molecules up through the xylem and the root. That's covered in another chapter or another topic on water. What we need to understand here is that there are certain factors that make transpiration happen faster or slower. So the higher the temperature, the more transpiration is going to happen. That's because we're going to have more evaporation from the leaf. Now, if I have a very humid area out here, like lots of water content, that's going to result in less transpiration because it's a smaller difference in water vapor content. Now, plants aren't just at the mercy of their environment. They can also control the water loss by opening or closing those stomata. Surrounding those stomata are these structures called guard cells. Okay, so guard cells can be found on either side of the stomata. The stomata is just the opening and they can fill with water and swell and that's going to cause the stomata to open. 
or water can be removed from those guard cells and then they collapse back together. But the opening and closing of the stomata is controlled by those guard cells. And it's one of the ways in which the plant can control um, that gas exchange. So remember, those stomata need to stay open for gas exchange to get that carbon dioxide necessary for photosynthesis to come into the plant. So controlling that is a very important function for these plants. Now here's a really fun experiment if you wanna try this on your own. This apparatus is called a potometer and they can look different. There's some different variations here, but they all have a few things in common. So one of the things that I'll um, point out here is that I'm gonna have some kind of a water-filled tube connected to a leaf. And that water-filled tube simulates the xylem or that tube where water is going to move through the plant. So as water exits the plant via transpiration, okay, that's gonna happen through the leaf, what will happen is that, that that movement of water should pull water in this column up through this tube. If you have done a good job setting up this potometer, you've also introduced an air bubble into that line. So as water is pulled through this tube, the air bubble is going to be pulled along and we can actually measure that um, using something, something like a ruler. So once you've measured the distance that the air bubble has gone, you can multiply that by the um, surface area, okay, of the diam that involves the diameter of that tube, and you can actually calculate the volume of water that has transpired or moved through that plant. If you want to do another trial, you use this reservoir. So you open up this valve and you um, open this reservoir that will push this air bubble back to the starting point. Okay, but potometers are really great for measuring transpiration. Another great thing to measure about plants is something called the stomatal density. So when I think about density, this isn't mass per volume like in an object. Stomatal density is going to be the number of stomata in a given area. So maybe like per square centimeter or something like that. There's a couple of methods that you can use to investigate this. This is going to be determined by the type of plant you have. So if you have a plant where the lower epidermis is easy to peel off, you can just peel that off and you can mount it on a slide. And what we'll notice is that there are holes in the epidermis. Each of those holes is a stoma. Or you can alternatively paint the bottom of that epidermis or the bottom, that underside of the leaf with clear nail polish. And then when it dries, you can peel that off and that's being a cast and you can study it underneath of a microscope and you'll get an image like this. So you can count the stomata. So once you know the area that you are working with, you can then count the stomata and whether or not they're open or closed, that's another thing you can take a look at. But the stomatal density is just the number and then you can compare this for different species of plants or plants of the same species that grow in different areas. There are a lot of variables that you can investigate here all related to adaptations for gas exchange in these plants.